Thank you. So hi everyone, my name is Dmitry. I work for Red Hat and OpenShift team. And today I'm going to give you an overview of MetalCubed and hopefully even show something. Let me first show you some slides. Okay. Do you see my slides? Wonderful. So MetalCubed, what is even this? It's a Kubernetes project uh, to, for, management, for managing bare metal machines using Caronic, as you can guess uh, from hearing this uh, talk here. Uh, it consists of three main parts. Um, first, it has Kubernetes API for managing bare metal machines using Caronic, which is pretty much a wrapper around Ironic API that uh, converts our RESTful API in something more familiar for Kubernetes people. So, you know, um, Declarative API based on a lot of YAMLs, just as people like nowadays. Uh, another thing that uh, MetaCubed project provides is a cluster API provider uh, based on all this. So again, for those not familiar with Kubernetes, cluster API is a self-management API for Kubernetes. So that's Kubernetes API that allows you to install and scale Kubernetes. Kind of the same idea as Triple O, a bit more advanced. Um, and of course, the third component are container images to run Ironic and required services in a configuration that is recognized by MetalCubed. I'm placing here a few helpful links. Uh, MetalCubed.io is a website. On GitHub, comment is MetalCubed-io. And there is a MetalCubed-dev on Google Groups, which is a mailing list that the upstream project is uses. Uh, this is a uh, CNCF project. I probably gonna confuse incubated with graduated. I think it's incubated project. Um, so let's talk a bit about the components. Uh, we have the thing called bare metal operator. Uh, contrary to its name, it's not actually an operator in Kubernetes, but a controller. So what, what's a controller in Kubernetes? It's a something that manages uh, certain resources in the API. So in Kubernetes, you can create custom resources in the API. Like in, a, in Ironic, you have nodes and ports. In Kubernetes, you can just add things. And a controller is what actually backs uh, this API and provides it with some logic. So bare metal operator is managing resources that are called bare metal host. And these resources are more or less directly corresponding to nodes and ports in Ironic. So each bare metal host is a node that can be deployed, can be inspected and cleaned and stuff like this. As I said, declarative API, a lot of YAMLs I will show you. Um, the peculiar thing about bare metal operator is it assumes the complete authority over nodes. So it manages the whole life cycle. Uh, it's not connecting to nodes you enrolled, it manages them. So you create through bare metal operator, you inspect through bare metal operator, you deploy, undeploy, and you delete through bare metal operator. In theory, you should not touch Ironic. So Ironic becomes, in this scenario, a tool, a backend tool, rather than another API you're interacting with. Now, when you start debugging it, of course, you know how it happens. Uh, but that's the idea. Um, what features bare metal operator currently provides? Uh, it has its own sets of drivers, which I don't like, but that's the case. IPMI Redfish, iDrag, uh, through Redfish, ILO, and RMC are currently supported. The drivers, I think actually IBMC, maybe I forgot about them. Uh, it supports no more deployments of an image. It supports what they call live ISO, which is the RAM disk deploy in these guys, um, but only supporting ISO at this point. And it supports running a custom deploy step instead of a normal deployment. Just one step really, because people ask me to have a simple API. So it's possible to replace the current deployment with one deploy step. Um, a separate inspection currently in band, although I know some people hacked it to do out of band inspection as well. It supports rate and bias settings configuration. And it supports uh, a bit of an interesting feature of per node deploy image customization. So it, you can build and deploy image per node using, um, you can provide your own controllers that build an image per node, which is a bit interesting. We use it in OpenShift. Um, so what happens with bare metal hosts? So this is the logic. Um, 
uh, it always driven by the state of a bare metal host. So what is written there is the authority. What is happening in Ironic follows. If uh, the bare metal host is in a so-called post state, then nothing is happening. If the node does not exist in Ironic is created, if credentials are verified. If bare metal host marks the node is already deployed, then we adopt. So yesterday, some uh, uh, Ruby, I think, asked me uh, whether we use adoption. Yes, we use adoption because if according to bare metal host, the node is deployed, but the node doesn't exist in Ironic, we create and adopt because bare metal host is authority. Otherwise, if the node is not inspected, so no introspection data is available, inspect it. If rate and bias config doesn't match what we expect in cleaning, uh, if bare metal host has an image but is not deployed, I will explain how, it, uh, how it's determined later. Deploy, if the image is changed on bare metal host, undeploy and deploy again. We don't use rebuild, we really go through and deploy and deploy because there may be also bias settings, changes, you know, stuff like this. And if bare metal host is removed or detached, so-called detached state, the node is deleted. Um, that's basically its uh, life flow. Now a few words about the second component is called Cluster API Provider MetalCubed. So Cluster API, as I said, is a self-management API for Kubernetes. It operates on clusters, which consist of machines. So cluster is your Kubernetes installation that is self-managed or managed by another Kubernetes. A machine is a node, right? A, a node on which you install a Kubernetes component, control plane or worker. Um, this uh, project is an inf so-called infrastructure provider for this cluster API. So it provides, um, it manages infrastructure on which uh, Kubernetes nodes are installed. Uh, the, the machines are attached to MetalCubed machines. So it's another custom resource. MetalCubed machine is a request to find a bare metal host and deploy on it. So each MetalCubed machine is kind of an allocation in Ironic, I would say, or a Nova instance. Let's put it this way. Um, and it all in the end ends up on an ironic node. Now, yeah, ironic image, the third component of this picture. Um, we have one container image that can start all most services here, which is bad container design, but yeah, historical reasons. It can start Ironic API and Conductor, which I'm going to merge into one service because last week my changes merged for a combined Ironic service. Inspector, we have Apache for suing files and for terminating TLS. We have DNS mask as a DHTP and TFTP service. And we have MariaDB, which I want to replace with SQLite by default and make it optional. You can deploy Ironic image the way you want. You can even deploy your own Ironic and point bare metal operator at it. But uh, the bare metal operator has some deployment scripts that install Ironic on Kubernetes. Also, everything is on Kubernetis. Uh, it's exactly the way bare metal operator expects it. So it's a bit convenient. In OpenShift, we do it a bit differently. We have a cluster bare metal operator, which is an operator that uh, manages the life cycle of bare metal operator itself and of Ironic. So this is an operator to manage all operators. Yeah, what else? Um, a few other projects, if you check out our repositories, IPA downloader is a container image to download and cache Ironic Python agent. So you, right, it has to end up in the Apache container. So this is like a side container or actually run it as a neat container. So a neat container runs when the port starts. It downloads IP and caches it. There is a hardware classification controller which can label your bare metal hosts. So labels are, more or less free form annotations on Kubernetes. Uh, why it's useful because I will show you when you create a machine, you can ask it to target specific labels. And this controller allows you to assign labels based on inspection. So you can define the rules like if it has more than like four CPUs, I don't know, four is funny, right? Like more like 64 CPUs, uh, assign a label large. And then on your metal cube machine, on your machine, you can say, okay, host selector, it has mesh label large. Um, MariaDB image, as I said, I'm splitting out MariaDB code from Ironic image. Um, Ironic agent, okay, this is a funny one. In OpenShift, we no longer use uh, um, 
Ionic Python agent builder to build images. We run a container on top of CoreOS. So since CoreOS, there is like upstream CoreOS, it's called Fedora CoreOS. We also have upstream version of this image. There is a uh, IPAM for MetaCubed. I'm not familiar with that to be honest, but you can use it. And there's MetaCubed dev env, which is dev stack for MetaCubed, if you think about it. So that's a collection of bash scripts and Ansible code that allows you to install MetaCubed uh, with virtual machines instead of bare metals. So you can develop and play with it. And that's what I actually want to show you. Um, I have a MetaCubed environment here. Fortunately, I, I hope it works still because I've messed with it quite a lot. I want to show you all the things I've just talked about as a lot of YAML. So prepare for like YAML overdose. Now I need to change which window I'm sharing. For some reason, it doesn't allow me to share the, the window I need, which is weird. No, it did. We, we could see something briefly. Maybe it wasn't the right one, but I just saw a terminal briefly. So, yeah, it's a... Hold on. I'm trying to understand what is going on. Now I can see something. Right, because but that's just I've switched temporarily in another window. So, okay, okay will you will hold on, I'll try to do it normally. If no, not thank you, totally. If it doesn't behave, okay. Now I've closed an one terminal and I can use a second one. I guess it just too many terminals. So, do you see a terminal? Yes. Wonderful. Um. So MetaCube DevEnv, as I said, it's a virtual environment similar to DevStack. I've uh, have this VMs. Um, they're already inspected because uh, inspection happens pretty early when you enroll nodes. Basically, you enroll nodes and they inspect it right away, and then they're in available state. So MiniCube is like a detail of MetaCube DevEnv, and these are two testing nodes they are running. Now, uh, let's just so that you believe me, let's take a look. So the two nodes, node zero and node one, they are here in uh, Kubernetes. So BMH is a shortening of bare metal host, right? Just I'm asking Kubernetes to list all bare metal hosts in metal cube namespace. Uh, we can take a look at Ironic. There is a wrapper here that was. So see, we have two nodes. They are named like namespace uh, tilde name, so node zero, cubed uh, tilde node zero. They are part on then manageable. They should have their introspection data already, and we can even check that. Um, yeah, let's check that. Let's, uh, let's ask it for some details. Actually, I want to use YAML. I will spare you YAML. I'll just ask you to describe it. It's still YAML-like. So what we have here is a resource of kind bare metal host. Its name is node.0 zero, and it's in namespace metal cube. So this is just Kubernetes stuff. Uh, this is just Kubernetes stuff. I don't know what it is even. So the spec. Spec is how we create a bare metal host. It's essentially what we request to happen. That's the state we want to achieve. So cleaning metadata. This BMC, it's, uh, this is a PMI node, this is this address. Uh, credentials are stored in a secret, secret is a Kubernetes way of storing, well, secrets, so passwords, stuff like this. Put Mac address, UEFI mode, and online it means powered on. It's powered on because we have inspected it. So status in Kubernetes is what is the current state of things, really. Uh, Credentials are verified, as you can see, no errors. Hardware is a result of hardware inspection. So that's coming from Ironic Inspector. And you see there is a lot of information, X firmware, RAM, storage, nothing else. And there is a history. So it was inspected earlier today, roughly two hours ago, and it took roughly three minutes. Status okay, 
powered on, yes. Provisioning, so the provisioning part of the status is uh, what we expect to deploy in it, right? That's information about deployment. Boot mode, yes, no image, you see, image empty. Uh, no rate, no device hits. So this is not that is not deployed on, it doesn't have an image. When it does have an image, we start deploying. We start deploying by putting, an, by putting an image to the spec. You cannot see it here, but is, there will be an image here. And then it goes through all the ironic stuff. And in the end, it puts the image in status to reflect the fact that this image has been deployed. Um, now, before we actually do that, I want to show you how it looks. Uh, so ironic here is deployed on the same Kubernetes uh, as a pod in uh, namespace code, berm, I think Bermet operator system. So it's a system namespace. It has, uh, I'll spare these details. Okay, this is a pod with ironic. So a pod is a grouping of containers in Kubernetes, right? They're all together. And actually in case of ironic, they're talking through a local host, which they can do because it's one pod. Let's see what's inside. Describe pod. Describe pod this. Uh, I cannot type apparently. Okay, that's a pod. Uh, it has containers. As I said, uh, the IPA downloader started as an init container. So a container that starts when the pod starts. So before we start anything, we download API. If we fail to download API, we don't start anything. Makes sense, I hope. Then we have containers, ironic API, you see. Uh, there's a lot of boring details. The image is cached locally. There's like some live checks. So there is a script we run. It's coming from the ironic image repository. There's TLS settings, ironic conductor, uh, ironic inspector, MariaDB, uh, MariaDB, Arrange Point, Keep Alive, the DNS mask. So log watch is a, a bit of funny thing. It's a container. We use it to fetch RAM disk logs. So if you're familiar with Ironic, when Ironic does something with a RAM disk, it puts uh, the logs into a file, which is not convenient for containers. So we have a container that is pretty much a bash script that loops or, or uh, checks the directory periodically. When it finds the RAM disk logs, it just unpacks it and dumps to a error and deletes. It's actually pretty funny. I, I should probably show you that. Um, cube logs from ironic log watch. There's nothing here. Okay. Yeah, probably I have to deploy it first, which is pretty fair. Um, then, and we can probably deploy it. I wanted to show us anything else. Ah, okay, let's talk about machines. So machines, we shouldn't have them. Um, pretty much nothing is created yet. So no resources for machines, from machines, uh, template, play doesn't exist as well. So all I've shown you so far was about bare metal operator. And you can use bare metal operator just as it is without cluster API. If you need to manage bare metal on your Kubernetes, you can install bare metal operator, you can install Ironic, connect them together and install this custom resource definition bare metal host and you can just do that. Now I'm also going to show you cluster API, which is the primary goal of MetaCube to be able to deploy clusters. And there's, there's a cluster already, I've prepared it in advance but uh, nothing is deployed. So I'm, I'm gonna use scripts that come with uh, MetaCube DevEnv to provision control plane, which is one master because I have a small deployment. Okay, this Ansible, Ansible, something happens. Some generate some templates. Um, I'll again spare the details. It's not exactly interesting what is going on there. There's a lot of YAML generated and just give it a minute to download the image. And again, we don't have to use the scripts. You can use cluster CTL, just a command here. Uh, 
yeah, so it applied something. Now, in Kubernetes, everything happens asynchronously. So the fact that it has finished in 30 seconds doesn't mean anything. It's probably hasn't even started deployment yet. Hasn't, yeah, no, it hasn't started deployment yet. It should have created a machine already, not yet. No. Uh, I don't remember the exact order it does things. No, it has to be machine actually first. Okay, yeah. Once you run the watch command, of course, everything appears. So, okay, we got a machine. Uh, machine is not a metal cubed notion, it's a notion of cluster API. So that's an abstraction around uh, some things that Kubernetes can deploy. Them. It, as being an abstraction, it needs some real implementation. So real implementation in this case is metal cubed machine. We have one as well. So. Uh, creating a machine creates a metal cube machine. A metal cube machine is linked to a bare metal host. Uh, let's probably take a look at the bare metal host. And describe. Is this the one we're deploying? I hope that's the one that we're deploying. No, it's probably not the one we're deploying, right? Or maybe it hasn't started deploying yet. Okay, that's the one we deployed. Okay, we're gonna look at another node. Node one, node one uses Redfish, as you can see uh, through Sushi tools. And the spec is a bit larger, actually substantially larger. We have this consumer ref, which means what this thing is used for. Um, we, so it's used for metal cube machine with this name. We had an image, that's the image. Uh, pretty similar to Arnica instance and for it has metadata, network data, user data. These are for, for the config drive. All of them are secrets actually. No errors so far. Uh, Hardware inspection already talked about that. And in, in, in the status, we still have an empty image because the provisioning is not over yet. Okay. Um, Let's take a look at the metal cube machine. Scrapped machine. Uh, okay, it has an annotation, um, also free form strings, uh, that it is connected to bare metal host node one. Then there is some Kubernetes stuff. Okay, and it's owned by a machine with this name. So this is this link actually bidirectional. It has this template, so that's where the image is coming from, right? Before we saw there was no image on bare metal host, it came from here. And here it came from a template, which is this template. Uh, there's also status, so status provides addresses. Addresses come from IPAM, metadata, network data, and other stuff. So template, no, let's talk about machine first, right? Uh, machine, you see, is, uh, where is that? Yeah, this, this, is, no, this is not coming from um, uh, metal cubed anymore, so it's cluster API. And it doesn't have much, but it has a link to metal cubed machine. So infrastructure F, it means what implements this machine. What implements it is metal cubed machine that we just watched. And before I probably open the floor for questions, I'm going to show you is template, I think it's called. Okay, get. Okay, that's a template for machines. What it has, it has uh, pretty much the image. There can be host selector here. Remember I mentioned you could use labels for select specific uh, hosts. So this could go here. That's Currently we're selecting just any host and its image. And there's also a data template, which is used to generate, I think it's called data template. Yeah, this is used to generate uh, metadata, network data and user data. So all the stuff that goes on config drive, you don't specify it in this case per machine, per bare metal host. Also uh, we have a template here that is used to generate it. And 
yeah, it, it looks a bit fancy. So this provisioning pool comes from the IPAM controller. So it tells request me IP addresses from here. And yeah, again, IP addresses from pool. So there is a pool and asks IP address from here. And yeah, that's it. Not, nothing interesting. There's no user data actually, I guess. But it could be. All right, has it finished deploying or not? Provisioned, oh, nice. So we have finished deployment. We can take a look at that. Yeah, all I wanted to show you that we have the image in status. So this is status and now I have image here. So if I delete ironic node, probably not gonna do that. <laughs> but if I do delete the ironic node, uh, it should just recreate it and adopt it. Uh, I would also upset cluster API if I try to do it right now. But, but you can do it, I don't know. Okay, you see you have instance UID, it's active. Uh, I think to, I cannot just delete an active node without putting it in maintenance mode. Yeah, it's probably retrying until it just fails. Okay, okay, I got it. And now I did it. Yes. Okay, I definitely screwed up control plane <laughs> installation right now. But I'm curious if they see it's a rare bring after some time. I don't know, I can watch. I, I, doesn't reconcile constantly, so it may take us some time. Maybe somebody actually have questions while I'm doing this. And I, I don't see Zoom window, by the way, so I do see Zoom window. Okay. Yeah, because that's, that's it can take a while, while the reconciliation right. doesn't run every second, a few seconds, it's minutes. Thanks a lot, Dimitri. Does anyone have questions? If no one has, I go first, maybe. Oh, hold on, hold on. We have a node, look. Nice. Uh, for some reason it didn't use, oh, okay, it fixed the name. All right, mm -hmm. see, it just happens as you see. Oh, inactive, see, yeah. it adopted the node. Um, so I messed it up and it repaired what I messed up. I nice. think it's a nice conclusion for this demo. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. Uh, awesome. Stop sharing. Okay. Okay. I'm ready for questions. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Dimitri. Um, I have a, I have a first question. Um, you said that MetaCube uses its own drivers for for IPMI, Redfish, and so on. Um, does doesn't that create or is then like a potential risk that this interferes with what Ironic does? Or why does it have its own drivers? Let me Sorry, put the other way around. I really poorly expressed it. Uh, it's not like the own code. They simply just define the name schema differently. So it's the same drivers we use, just the schema is different and the options are different. So there's no direct mapping from driver. Okay, there is direct mapping, but pretty much different names. I guess I just confused everyone with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The other question I had was about like um, the metal hosts that are already deployed and that, that I adopted, right? So, so in, in okay, does it, is that only the case when like a node like now is being deleted and then is like recreated and then being adopted again? Is that the, the main use case? Because initially I understood, like you said, Okay, then the Bemeta nodes are maybe already deployed and then I just pulled in and adopted into, into Ironic. So, so what is the scenario in, in, under which this would happen? There are actually a few of them. Um, first, the port is not, the Ironic port is not persisted in normal deployment. You can do that, of course. So if the master which hosts Ironic fails, it's going to be recreated completely from scratch. Mm -hmm. So with empty, empty database. That's what you do and ah, mm -hmm. to avoid redeploying everything you adopt. That's one case. Second case, 
when you go from your main, so right now I showed you control plane deployment, which is not going to succeed because I missed it. Or maybe it will, I don't know. Maybe it's smart enough to actually restart. Um, we deploy this control plane and then we pivot. So we move our MetaCube installation there to the freshly deployed control plane and shoot down this management cluster. So that's again a case where Ironic gets uh, restarted on a, on a completely new location oh, with okay. empty database. And mm -hmm. again, we adopt the nodes, including the nodes themselves that right. host Ironic. Um, we have a similar process in OpenShift, not exactly the same, but pretty similar. We have an installer which also creates by meta hosts and then moves them mm -hmm. to the actually deployed cluster. And can you adopt? Yes, in OpenShift, we have an alternative installation procedure and the are doing adoption. So it's possible to create a bare metal host that is so-called externally provisioned. So, which is MetaCube speak for adoption. So yes, they do that. Too. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Dimitri? I don't see any hands or any questions. Just speak up, speak up if you have a question. Doesn't seem to be the case. So Dimitri, when you deleted that node um, at the end there, um, and then I thought you commented that it was adopted. So I'm a little confused by that. Was it deleted in the ironic sense? So um, what I did, I just took direct access to Ironic and force deleted an already provisioned node. What it means from Ironic, the node disappeared. What it means for bare metal operator? Bare metal operator is the authority. It has this bare metal host resource corresponding to it. And it has image in spec. So spec has an image and status has an image and this match. So it knows this node is deployed. It's the authority. So what it does, it checks with Ironic periodically and says, okay, there's no node corresponding to this bare metal host. Let's create it, it creates it. It moves it to manageable because that's part of creation. And then, it, okay, according to my rec records, it's deployed already. So it does adoption in Ironic. What adoption means, it moves directly from manageable to, uh, to active without the actual provisioning. So just you tell Ironic, you know, it's already deployed. There's already instance running there, just mark it as active. That's what adoption is. I see. And that's because MetalCube is the authority and it just trusts that the bare metals in the, in the same state that it was in last time it, it uh, looked. Yes, yes. So it doesn't really know that the bare metal is in that state. It just trusts that it, it is. Right. When, when it's a part of the cluster, there are like higher level logic. So when, for example, like cluster API realizes that it can no longer con uh, talk to this master, for example, for example, it actually got destroyed. Then there will be processes for uh, tearing down this master, finding a new machine, deploying a new master on it, you know. But it's high level logic. Parameter operator is not doing that. There are safeguards against what you're saying, what you're suggesting, but just not at this level. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Richard. Any other questions? No? Okay, thanks a lot, Dimitri.